welcome to Remote Places New Zealand. This is Dudley Moore and today we're going to head out to Ward Beach in Marlborough. We're driving south on State Highway 1 from Lake Grassmere. Here 50% of the salt New Zealanders consume is produced. Then we pass Lake Alterwater. This interesting small lake is often dry as we're travelling through parts of the country where the evaporation rate is often higher than the annual rainfall. Next is the left turn onto Ward Beach Road, which takes us the six kilometres out to Ward Beach, out there on the rim of the Pacific Ocean. We quickly pass Flaxbourne Olive Oils on our right. This is the location of our next video, where we will be sharing our experience when we joined their recent olive harvest. So keep an eye out for that. Still on our left, but just out of sight, is the southern end of Lake Altwater. Above it is London Hill, 323 metres high, named after one of the first ships to bring sheep to the area. And if you can spot a cone-shaped hill on our forward right, that is Weld Cone, the highest spot around 368 metres. To the west of that is the Weld Cone Wind Farm, which generates electricity for 350 local homes. Soon the Flaxbourne River joins us on the right. It closely follows the road, joining us on its journey to the sea. This railway started in Picton way back in 1880, reaching Ward in 1911 and finally connected through to Christchurch in December 1945. No trains are visible, so we cross and then go through the river on a concrete ford. When the river is up in flood, a detour by the Ward Township is required. At the intersection we turn left. We are now in the middle of Flaxbourne the first South Island sheep station. Settled way back in 1844 by a couple of keen lads out from England. It was started with 3,000 sheep from New South Wales. From this small start, they expanded to having 70,000 Merino sheep at one stage. These lonely Englishmen were gifted two pair of rabbits. I bet they later rued the day they released them Either that, or they didn't understand the term. They breed like rabbits. As in 1893, part of the rabbit control measures meant Flaxbourne exported 500,000 rabbit skins. These settlers apparently didn't learn by one's mistakes, as they introduced ferrets. Some years liberating up to 800 of these bird-destroying machines. The Tarsil Road turns to gravel funneling between the river and the hills. It quickly opens out to an incredibly picturesque view of the rock and shingle beach. We have arrived. Today at the north end of the beach, the Chancet farm has provided a pop parking spot for NZMCA members. This is behind the gate and we spend the night here. Next morning I get up early to see the sunrise and walk the beach. Through the wild flowers and stunted trees. Heading north I am soon among the varied rocky outcrops including the round ward boulders. Like the better known Moraki boulders by Omaru, but these are much larger, as if on steroids. You can see holes and tracks where the harder boulders have journeyed through the softer rock over time. Heading back south, 
I notice a large fishing boat on a trailer arriving at the beach. It is soon transferred to behind a caterpillar tractor. On the beach, pushed out into the incoming waters. For the roar of the uplands, it slips backwards and heads out for a day's fishing. It is one of the local cray fishing boats that have operated from here for 40 odd years. The sun continues its slow journey up on the horizon, giving hope for another day. Thank you for watching. I trust you've been encouraged to slow down when travelling through Ward. It's worth stopping and taking the time to have a look around.